Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're looking at iOS 10 beta. Apple announced this at WWDC. We're going to take a look at what it looks like, how stable it is, what it smells like, does it work as a dessert topping, all of it. We're going to do it right now. All right, so a couple things. Um, I have an iPad Air 2 here as well. We're going to take a look there too as well because there's, um, there's a couple features that are exclusive to the iPad, but... They didn't talk a lot about the iPad, which was interesting because the last two new iPads that we've seen were labeled as Pro, right? They had the big one, which that was obviously a Pro model. And then they took the Air 2 and then put, put out a new model and called it Pro, which means that they think that this thing is something that professionals can use. And they added a lot of features, keyboard features, that made it similar to the way OS X works, now Mac OS, and they didn't really add anything this year, which is kind of interesting, And but maybe we'll find out more later this year. Because remember, WWDC is really just the first half of what we learn about Apple's new software. The second half comes with the hardware announcement later this year, and we'll find out some more things that it can do. Okay, so maybe they'll announce a new iPad Pro and we'll have some new capabilities for that. So we'll start by shutting the thing off here or putting it to sleep. Stupid cases. This is the only phone I use a case on because I usually record with this phone. And you'll see that there's little focusing issues because I'm not recording with it. So one thing you see here is press home to unlock. I kind of have a beef with that. We'll look at that in a second because I only have so long to talk about the lock screen before it fades out. Um, this is the new proactive center that they have, and this is what notifications look like too. Everything is redesigned in this release. Okay, if we swipe this way, we get the camera. That works. And if we swipe back, we just swipe through the camera. Now, back to where it says press home to unlock. This is something that when I reviewed the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus, there's one thing that I really had a problem with, and that's the new Touch ID sensor. It's so fast. And the thing is, Apple trained us for years that to unlock our iPhones, we press that button. And then now, if you want to interact with the lock screen, you have to learn to press the power button on the side, or else it's going to go straight to the, straight to the home screen that you see now. So... You know, they changed our habits with that. And now it looks like we're going to have to change it back a little bit. Um, again, this could change in the future because if we look at the way it works, if we hold it normal, it just goes to the home screen. Sometimes it does that. Sometimes it tells me to press home to unlock. But, I, you know, no one knows how the finished product is going to look. Now we're going to start off with things that Apple did not talk about at WWDC. And by the way, they probably talked about more than we could even talk about in this video. First up, the one that everybody's been waiting for, you can now remove some stock apps. Okay, so we can see the ones that we have to keep. Messages, camera, photos. Makes sense why you would need those. News and wallet, uh, yeah, okay. So what we're gonna notice here is that it tells us we can remove it. Now, note that that is a big difference from delete. So we're gonna remove it. I'm going to remove stocks because that's a useless app. Let's remove videos for fun. And we're going to go to the App Store. And we're going to put these things back and just watch how long it takes to reinstall these apps. All right, here we have stocks. All right, we're going to put this back on the phone. And by the way, ads in the App Store now. Every time you search, you're going to see something like that at the top. And honestly, I've had this thing for about 24 hours now, and I find it incredibly frustrating just to see that. So let's see how long it takes to install this. Wow, look at that. It didn't even have to download. Okay, so the way it looks, and again, the way it looks, I'm not throwing accusations because I could be completely wrong about this. The way it looks is that it's not actually removing it. It's just removing the icon from your home screen. So it's not that much better than throwing it in a crap folder. Okay, we have the new Apple TV remote over there. That's the, that's the current one. I'll probably make a separate video about that if you're interested. Curious if you could remove the Apple Watch app because that's something that surely a lot of people would love to. Yeah, so you can remove podcast, calculator, FaceTime. And let's look in extras here, see if there's anything there. Yeah, and a bunch of those too. Great. Fantastic. But again, it seems like you're really only removing the icon. 
Another thing that I thought was actually pretty cool is facial recognition in photos. Um, so they really, they revamped all of these apps. Okay, um, and it's, it, they did a great job. Now, the problem is it's doing it based on what's in your, what's on your phone. And it's not doing it based on anything in the cloud. So Google Photos does a better job still. And that's clearly where they got the idea. But notice one, two, three, four, five. Five of them are me. All right. So obviously the facial recognition is not that good. Okay. And there's a couple other duplicates on there as well. All right. So that's just a bit of what they did to photos. Uh, all new maps, quick controls, opening maps, and they're opening up to developers. And that was another big thing. They're opening up these apps um, to extensions from developers. So you'll be able to make, if you're a developer, you can make a maps extension, um, iMessages they opened up. It's really interesting that, because Apple has never really opened up like that before. So we have shortcuts down here to stuff that we might want to go. Just in case I want to drive to Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That's about 17 hour drive away. Fair enough. You know, I would love to go there. So, okay, it's fair. I find that the OS smells like uh, vanilla ice cream. Although that could be just because I eat a lot of vanilla ice cream. So we'll, we won't pass judgment on that. All right, next up is a new Apple Music design, which is a long time coming, considering that they only redesigned it one year ago. Uh, June 30th was actually when they released the new Apple Music to the public. Um, yeah, so a lot of people weren't happy because, you know, the iPod came out in 2001 and people were buying music on iTunes for years. Now they come out with Apple Music. And if you didn't want Apple Music, the, the music app was very centered around that. So you were kind of screwed if you had invested so much in iTunes. All right, so now we have in big letters here, playlist artists, and this is your library. This is the stuff that I have in my library. It's not trying to, trying to throw me into Apple Music, and that's it. A Apple News has a new design as well. Um, you saw that, that it did have a new icon. See, Top Stories is big like that. All right. Um, personally, I don't use Apple News because I never found it to be very good. Um, I'm always looking for a good news source, and maybe I'll start using it now. Uh, they brag that they have 2,000 publications. Um, I, I don't see how that it's that small. Um, for the Love of Tech is on there. I know that. So it should probably be 1999 because I know for a fact that one of those is abandoned. But, yeah, I mean, anybody can post their RSS feed up in Apple News. They must mean 2,000 partners. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, subscriptions, breaking news, notifications, and so on. Home app. So this is new. I... You know, I don't have any smart home stuff, so we're not going to be able to go too deep into this. Set it and forget it. Fantastic. I, that's, that's the best way to, to handle any appliance, is to be able to set it and forget it. Uh, so yeah, you're supposed to see your own personal wallpaper, which is apparently this. Um, see your devices. See who is at the door from the lock screen. So for example, like, uh, you know, the Ring video doorbell that I've heard so much about, um, you can see who's at your door, which I don't even know if, if that thing supports HomeKit. But if it does, you would be able to see who's at your door from your lock screen. Emojifying. So they made a big deal about iMessages because there is actually quite a bit that's new in iMessages. So let's see if we can type up a message here. And so these are new over here. Um, yeah, whatever these things are. Yeah, they, they seem like um, like 80s emojis, maybe? I, I don't know. <laughs> so we can also do these little drawings like you see here. We'll just tap that, and then we'll do a little scribbling there. Let's do a little no other thing. And, and then it's going to send, and there it goes. And it, and it animates the drawing like that, which is kind of cool. Um, so what I was talking about, emojifying. So we could say, hello, I'm... happy so and then we, we would tap the emoji icon and then that turns yellow so now we tap the yellow word and anything that can be translated into an emoji will turn yellow so then we tap that thing and there we go now we have an arrow icon to send and of course nothing's going to send because this is not a real phone number so you'll also be able to say it louder or or say it quieter which is basically blowing up the text louder or or bigger or smaller which is something that we first saw at Google I.O. from Allo. 
And, you know, it's a cool idea, I guess. And it only seems to work for iMessages. I can't do it on SMS. And I'm not going to go and punch somebody's phone number in there just so I could demonstrate an iMessage. Um, and, yeah, so that's being uh, opened up to, to developers. So because of that, you'll be able to use extensions and you'll be able to do more with it. Um, a lot of what they talked about was with extensions. And that's really cool because that means third parties can – Add more functionality to apps that you already have. Okay. Um, finally, I just want to mention Swift Playgrounds. We're going to bring in the iPad for this. By the way, these are the, the new notifications that I was talking about. I have to press the home screen again to unlock the home button. Sorry. Um, so, yeah. So, we have Swift Playgrounds. This comes standard with the iOS 10 beta if you install it on an iPad. So, you look at this. This is about teaching kids to code. Can I orientate this? Yes. By the way, I have found this beta to be very stable. The only problem that I've had with it is sometimes it doesn't want to shift orientation when I turn it sideways. Let's see if it does it right now. Yeah, it does it. So, um, it, you know, it just seems to happen at the worst times. Other than that, though, things have been perfectly stable for me. I still don't recommend installing it. It's still beta one. Bugs can come out of anywhere. And we really don't have a right to complain about them at, the, at this point because it's so early. There isn't even a public beta out. So yeah, Fundamentals of Swift, Beyond the Basics, it's really cool. If you have kids and you have an iPad, give them this. I mean, you know, they said every kid should learn to code, and they should. Um, it's something that you really just, um, you learn problem-solving skills. Um, anyway, that's it. I, I won't preach to you any more about how you should raise your kids. Um, <laughs> I'm Rich from Neowin. Have a great night.